Hi, in this video, we are going to see how we can deploy image classification model that we built using TensorFlow. So in the last video, what we did is we took an data set, we did transfer learning and built an image classification model. In this particular video, we are going to understand the image classification pipeline that we built. We are going to build the uh, base code for inference. And then in the next video, we are going to take the code and deploy it as a web application. So let's get started. So in my previous video, I, uh, what we did is we built an image classifier using TensorFlow. If you have not seen the video, you can click the link on the top and watch it. So basically what we did is we took an bean sleeve data set. The bean sleeve data set has three classes uh, that we have, we, have, we predicted. Uh, two were classes, the disease classes, and one were healthy leaf classes. So basically leaves which are infected and leaves which are not infected. And what we did is we scaled the images to bring it in, bring all the pixel value between zero to one range. And then we resize the image because for transfer learning, we use mobile net. The images that we got were 500 by 500. We wanted to make it 224 by 224 uh, that the transfer learning uh, mobile net uh, model accepts. We did that. We batched the data set. So we added one more dimension uh, to our uh, image data set. Uh, that is a batch dimension. And then what we did is we uh, trained the model. We finally saved the model and then we had a final model file, right? Now what we are going to do is we are going to replicate this training pipeline for deployment. The reason is whatever you did during training, like scaling, resizing, the same is apply, applicable during deployment as well. So that's what we are going to do in this video. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to build functions that can be used for uh, inference of the code. Uh, right and we are also going to load the model and do some inference and test how good our model is uh, in the next video what we are going to do is we are going to take the same code with some slight modification and deploy it as a web application so basically if somebody comes to a web page and they say give an url of an image we want to predict whether what uh, whether the particular bean leaf is a infected or not infected right we want to predict within the three classes that we had if within infected we had two classes uh, and uh, uh, uninfected we are one class so we are going to predict that so what uh, this this the bottom one is what we are going to build now uh, we are going to uh, build it but we are going to deploy it uh, as a web app in the next video so let's get started with this video the very first thing i have done is i have saved the model and loaded it into my google drive so for that what i am doing is i am mounting my google drive so i am using like from google collab dot drive, import drive and then i am telling drive dot mount i am mounting my drive so once my drive is mounted, my model is in this location. So I'm doing a list of this location. This is where my model file is. And what you can see is that is an assets directory. There's a variable directory. And that is an uh, protobuf file, which is the TensorFlow uh, format for saving the model. So this is the model that we are going to deploy. And the uh, very first thing I'm doing is I'm importing TensorFlow. And then for to load this particular model, I am using uh, TensorFlow Keras models dot load model method and giving the path to this particular model. So I will get a model object out of it. And finally, I'm putting the model dot output to, uh, to see like how many classes it is predicting. So I can uh, do a model dot summary. I can put model dot inputs, but here I'm just loading the model and I'm just printing the model dot output. If you see the model is loaded to the object and when I say the model dot output, it's like none of three. So we are predicting three classes and that's what our previous uh, model was. Uh, you can also watch that uh, transfer learning uh, uh, transfer learning video in the video description below. I have put the link over that you can watch it. Right. The next I'm doing is I'm printing the model dot inputs to see what is the input to the model. Now the model input is 224 by 224 by 3. Uh, so basically this is the input format is it accepts. So we need to resize the images when we are picking some random images from internet, which we are going to see. We want to make sure the, uh, the output is 224 by 224 by 3. So even if you are larger image or a smaller image, you want to resize it. And finally, the model dot summary will show you the uh, show you the different layers of the model. So what we added, we had a Keras layer, which was nothing but a pre-trained uh, model from TensorFlow up called MobileNet, which has all these parameters. We just added one dropout layer and we added one dense layer, which is the uh, number of classification uh, classes that we had, that is three. 
uh, I can also print the weights within the model in each layer. So you can use this particular method model dot get weights uh, to print it. But uh, I'm, or I will just run this. You can see all the weights within all the layer in case if you want to use it. Uh, but I'm not going to focus much on it. So now very first thing I'm going to do is I need to uh, accept an image file, right? So I'm importing uh, image from the pill package uh, that is there and I'm importing NumPy. Now, if you remember the top pipeline, the very first thing we have to do is uh, scaling and resizing. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a scale method. In the scale method, what I am doing is I am uh, basically uh, exp expecting a new image value. I am converting it to float 32 and dividing by 255. So basically, I am making each and every pixel between 0 and 1. That's what I am doing uh, in this particular scale method. And finally, I am returning the resized image. So basically, I am returning the image, which is 224 by 224, which is my input model requirement as well. So in the scale method, that is what I am doing. In the next, I'm creating one more function. This is one function I have created. The next function I have created is uh, the decode image function. So what decode image does it, it's going to accept an image file, right? And then what it is going to do is it's telling it's an JPEG file and it has three channels. We have three channels in our input, uh, the red, green and uh, blue channel. And then what I'm doing, I'm calling the scale image method. So once I have read the image, I have uh, created a uh, three channel uh, layer image. I am just calling the scale function. So the scale function will uh, divide that particular input by 255 and return 224 by 224 image. And finally, I am running expand dimensions. The reason is if you see on the top in the training layer, we had a batch dimension. So the batch dimension we can batch we can pass 32 uh, batch, uh, 32 size batch, 64 size batch. But when we are doing inference on a single image, we want to pass only one image at a time. Or you can even pass 32 or 64 when you're doing batch inference. But what we are going to do is a real time inference. So we want only pass one image. So I'm just expanding the dimensions uh, so that I can add the batch dimension as well. So now this is another function I have. I am defining a dictionary object, the class classes, which are different classes that the model is going to predict. The reason is the model will give you only a numeric value. It will give you 0, 1, and 2. So the 0 was the angular leaf spot class. The 1 was bean rust class and 2 was healthy class. So the first two classes are infected leaves. The last class is an uninfected leaf. So I'm just creating a list object over here. I'm going to download three files from the internet. So these are complete completely uh, just random files that search in the internet. These are not seen during training. So I'm I'm downloading three images, one for angular leaf spot, another for uh, healthy leaf and third is for bean rest. I want to see how the prediction works. So let me quickly run this three and let me do an LS. So you can see these three files are getting downloaded and you can see one, two and the three files are there. Right now, let me first visualize the first one, uh, the angular leaf spot being JPEG that is that belongs to the angular leaf spot class. So, see if you see this is the image that we have, and you can see like all this in uh, inf this infected leaf infected with angular leaf spot that is the category that has been mapped in the data set. So, now what I'm going to do is I have the model object. I have the decode image function. So what I'm going to doing is I'm calling the model.predict function. I'm calling the decode image, which is the function I created on the top. And I am passing this particular image file. So the decode image is going to take this image. It's going to scale the image. It's going to add a batch dimension. And then it's going to return back. And then it's going to call the model.predict function. The model.predict function will return a three classes output. The output is softmax. It will return three classes. So I need to get that class which has the maximum score. So I am adding in numpy.arg maximum which will show me the maximum class out of it. So it can be angular spot, it can be bean rust, it can be healthy. So I want to see for which the maximum score is assigned. So I'm doing an np.argmax and assign it to y predict. So once I run this, finally what I'm doing is I am doing classes. Classes is my list object that I created. In the list object, I had given three classes. So I want to, I will just get an output here in the argmax, whether it's a zero index, one index, or two index. Now I want an, uh, I want an uh, English name to it, right? So I have created a classes of a list on the top. If you see over here, the classes list, and I am passing the y predict of uh, that uh, variable to it and to see what class it has predicted. So once I learn this, you can see basically it has predicted angular leaf spot. 
So this image belongs to angular leaf spot and it predicted correctly. The next image that I downloaded is greenbean.jpg. That is a healthy leaf. So if you see this health leaf is not infected, it's a pretty healthy leaf. Now, if you see all the image size that we download are different. Right, and that's why we are to resize uh, so that what to what our model accepts. I'm doing the same thing. I am calling this time with this particular image file model.predict, getting the yped and printing classes of yped of zero to see which class it predicted. It has predicted LT, which again is correct. Finally, I am opening the bean rest class. A bean rest jpeg image and you can see that this is bay bean rest where it has a lot of the spots uh, which is very different from the angular spot that you saw right so basically this is the bean rest class and what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, again call the model dot point function and run this and in this case you see it's braided bean rest right now i have the template code ready now we the very first thing in image classification is your pipeline may be completely different sometimes you may do use open cv to do a lot of pre-processing so you need to make sure your pipeline is replicated because that is very key during deployment right so what i did is i replicated my pipeline I created functions. Then the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these functions and then build a web application where I can give an URL to a web application and it will do the prediction. But there will be slight changes to the way we read image because when we give a URL here, I'm getting an image as bytes, but I will give an URL or image as a file directly. There I will give an URL and I will do some slight modification so that it can work as a web application. But most of the code, 98% of the code will be same. Only the input function will change right so that's about it in this video uh, thank you very much